Today, we'll be painting the flamingo sculpture we made a while ago with acrylic paint. She just came alive when we added colour. We also used a pretty interesting effect to suggest the water, so let's get into it. To paint our flamingo, we'll need an aluminium palette, some clear tape, clay varnish, a gallery series brush set, and a HB pencil. For paint, we'll be using white, medium yellow, vermilion, pink, raw sienna, sap green, and lamp black, all in acrylic color. This is a banding wheel, and I have used one in the project. It's not compulsory, but they are very helpful. The first step is to seal our friend. To do this, we create a mix of black and pink, just to tone it down a bit. This can be applied with the largest flat brush and add a little water so that it flows into all the crevices. I wipe the excess dark paint off the flamingo with a paper towel, then paint the legs. This seals those paper straws. While you're here, why not explore the new home of creativity? Take a look around the Create section of our site and uncover a whole heap of free stuff. From free projects, handy tips and tricks, and techniques to keep you busy. Once it's covered, allow this to dry thoroughly. Next, we create a cream from titanium white, a touch of raw sienna and lamp black. Don't mix any water into the mix and dry brush over the black. A good tip to do this is to charge the brush and wipe the excess paint off the brush onto a paper towel and use the flat part of the brush. This way the paint will stay out of the grooves of the sculpture. The other thing with this step is to try and run the brush across the texture, not with it, again keeping the white paint out of the hollows. Allow this to dry. Whilst this is drying, we can start on the base our friend is standing on. If you refer to the printout that you can find on the Montmartre website, you will see a foot, the water plants and a little fish design. We can draw this on with a HB pencil. To suggest the sort of sand bottom that she is standing on, we mix up some titanium white, a touch of medium yellow and a touch of raw sienna and paint this around the fish and the water plants. To create some interest, I flex some black over the base with a clay spoolie brush, but an old toothbrush would work too. Paint the fish in with watered down medium yellow. And once the yellow is dry, I paint some green into the water plants and let this dry. Flamingos tend to congregate in mud flats or lagoons where they can find shallow saltwater prey. There are six distinct species of flamingo. Once dry, I seal it with some clay varnish and we can turn our attention back to our flamingo. I create a shadow with grey made from white and black. As we all know, flamingos are a reddish pink colour. So to get this colour, I squeeze out some pink and a touch of vermilion and paint this over the bird. I start from the head and work back. Lay the colour on lightly so it doesn't get into the grooves. Cover the cream so none of it can be seen.
paint this colour onto our friend's foot too, using the rigger brush. Flamingos almost became extinct at the turn of the century, as their pink feathers were highly prized for ladies' hats. I cover it with a second coat of pink, but mix a little bit more vermilion into it and just continue to build up the tone. Some flamingos are even redder than this, almost a pure vermilion. While the pink is drying, we can start to detail the face. Start by painting the face and beak white and let this dry. Then we can use a rigger brush and lay in a dark line above the eye and then lay in those crescent shaped black lines down the beak after tinting with a pink wash. Flamingos have red irises so we can then very carefully paint these in with a rigger brush. The tip of the beak can then be painted black. To suggest water, we can use more of that clay varnish. To create a barrier, I wrap tape around the top of the base. Wrap it around a few times so that it reapplies back to itself. Next, apply more tape around the top, but allow the tape to sit about one centimetre above the flat part of the base. Next, I pour some clay varnish into this to a depth of about four millimetres. Allow this to dry. This can take up to about three days. We can then gently remove the barrier tape from around the varnish and the tape around the base. The last step is to paint the base up to the varnish. For this, we create a mix of the same color that we used for the sand from titanium white, medium yellow and raw sienna. And voila! Well, thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the project and at least picked something up. Have fun creating and we'll see you next time.